is something that I think is, is going to be quite important. Um, and and, and it's, there's not, I don't know of a company that's working on it seriously is, um, is a neural lace. Um, so you know, going, going back to the AI situation, um, like this is quite an important, uh, quite an important debate. Like the, if you assume any rate of advancement in AI, um, we will be left behind by a lot. Um, and so then we could be in, like, you know, benign, situ but the, even the benign situation, if you have some, you know, if you have ultra intelligent AI, um, we would be, you know, so, so far below them in intelligence that it would be, it would be like, you know, a pet, basically. A pet, that's what I was thinking. Like a pet. A cat. Like a cat. Like a cat. Like a cat. It would be like a house cat. cat. Yeah, right. it would be like the house cat. Right. Okay. Hi, my name is Bob. Um, in view of its potential to to be possibly the biggest game changer ever. Do you have any plans to enter the field of artificial intelligence? And in general, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's even close to being ready for prime time? I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. Um, if I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. And um, yeah, so that's. It's not the end of the world, you know. It's just, well, know, sort of pet. You've seen the movie. It could be. Yeah. It could be. It could be. Um, the you know, so that, but that honestly, that, that would that be the benign scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and so, house cat is okay. I mean, I don't love the idea of being a house cat. Okay. Um, <laughs> but but that, so, what's the solution? Yeah. So, I think the. Um, I, I think I think it I think it's to essentially. I think one of the solutions, the solution that, that seems maybe the best one is to have an AI layer. Um, if you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then um, a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex um, that um, could work, work well and symbiotically with, with you. I mean, just as your cortex works symbi symbiotically with your limbic system, your did, sort of a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest. This is something that's in, in surgically inserted or bred so, into the species or what? The, the fundamental limitation is input output. So uh, we, we already have, uh, we, we're already a cyborg. Um, it's just that, I mean, you have a digital version of yourself or, or partial version of yourself online in the form of your emails and your social media and all the things that you do. Um, um, so we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. I'm increasingly inclined to think that there should be some uh, regulatory oversight uh, at the inter at maybe at the national and international level uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't do something very foolish. And, and you have basically superpowers in, in that with your computer and your phone and, and the applications that are there. Um, you have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. So you can answer any question. Uh, you can video conference with anyone um, right. anywhere. You can send a message to millions of people instantly. Um, you know, you just do incredible things. And, um, but the constraint is, is input out output. So we're, we're IO bound, um, particularly output bound. I mean, like the, your output level is so low. It's like, particularly on a phone, like your two thumbs are sort of tapping away. Um, this is ridiculously slow. Um, our input is much better because we have a high bandwidth visual interface to the brain. Like our, our eyes take in a lot of, da lot of data. Um, so there's many orders of magnitude difference between um, input and output. Um, so mostly um, effectively merging in a symbiotic way with uh, digital intelligence revolves around eliminating the I.O. constraint. I take it there will be no HAL 9000 going up to Mars. <laughs> HAL 9000 would be easy. <laughs> it's way more complex than, I mean, it would put HAL 9000 to shame. Yeah. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay. 
I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. Um, so it's it be some sort of direct cortical interface. Um, and you called it a neural lace. Neur neural lace, yeah. Um, it's totally not Google Glass, right? No, I, I'm talking about something which... No, but it's which, like you wear it? Or you... No, I mean, it would be... Uh, I, mean, it, I mean, there are a few ways to approach this, but some sort of interface directly with your cortical neurons, particularly. But doesn't that imply uh, surgical insertion? Not or? necessarily. You could go through the veins and arteries, because that, that provides a, a complete uh, roadway to um, all of your neurons. Your neurons are very heavy users of energy, so they need high blood flow. So you automatically, with your veins and arteries, have um, a road network to your neurons. Still sur some kind of surgery, right? Um, yes, but it, you could insert something, you know, basically, you know, in, 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 into the jugular and, and have, <laughs> it gets macabre, but It sounds I mean, really easy and it, it doesn't involve, pop, it, doesn't, it doesn't involve, you know, like chopping your, your, your skull off or anything like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. It, and plus you're not a house cat anymore. We would be, you know, so so far below them in intelligence that it would be would be like, you know, a pet. Artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, Yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Doesn't work out. <laughs>